everyone. This is Sandra of Source News. This video you're going to see today is wonderful. I watched all of it. It's wonderful, wonderful. And I encourage you to do the same. Um, there's a lot of good things coming out of this um, video. Mario Murillo in the fall is putting, is going to have a documentary movie. Wow. Because I have gone to several of his um, tent revivals. I've also volunteered. And it is quite amazing to be present there, seeing all this God's glory floating all over the tent and the people are being healed and people are getting saved and we are praying for each other. It's just an incredible experience. And so now um, a movie documentary is coming out in the fall and I truly encourage you to watch this. And even if you can um, go to the actual tent revivals, if it's in your town, I know right now it's coming in April to Phoenix, Arizona. So you really need to make plans to go and, and be there and wherever else it's going to be moving. You can go to marmarillo.org, look at his events and where he's going to be at next. And if it's in your area, plan to go because it is incredible, incredible. So watch this um, video to the end. And um, your life will even be touched in this video. This is a really, really good. Okay. God bless and watch this video. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen Strang. And welcome to this very special edition of the Strang Report. Today, my guest is none other than Mario Murillo. And when I have Mario on, my numbers go through the roof, and I'm sure that's going to happen this time, because we're going to talk about miracles and supernatural events that Mario is going to tell us about. So let me, first of all, welcome you to my podcast. Thank you for working it in. We had a little trouble finding a time, but here we are. And I'm eager to find out about these miracles, and especially to talk about something that I've just learned about recently, and that's a movie that's going to happen in the fall in which you deal with actual miracles. Tell us yeah. about it. Well, it's called Living Proof. It'll be in theaters. And we had three healings that were so inescapably verified. And the backstories are so compelling that we produced a film telling the story of these three people. And uh, I, I, I'm going to talk somewhat about it because I'm very excited but one of the elements of it that I am excited about is that in instances in the film, the doctors of these people that were healed will go on record describing before and after and how the, the physical changes that the patient went through when they were healed. All three of these healings happened under our tent. And uh, signs and wonders have been a part of our ministry since the very beginning in the 1970s. And now we brought it to a point where the undeniable, notable healings, we're going to put it out there because America needs hope right now. And they need proof that there is a God who cares about them and that the gospel is real. And right. uh, even, you know, even the church is backpedaling on the deity of Christ and the inerrancy of scripture. So I think that what we're going to do is be a voice in America to reestablish the inerrancy of the Bible. Jesus is the son of God. And if you reach out to him, he will heal you. Well, I agree with you 100%. And you know, what you're talking about is really a renewal that needs to be constant because the early church, which was so powerful, that they overcame the evil Roman Empire, probably the most evil empire in the history of mankind, with no armies, no power, no nothing. They changed the world as we know it. Yeah. Um, it devolved into the Roman Catholic Church of Martin Luther's day, where he had to, you know, he and he said, um, how do they say it in Latin? I forget it, but it's only scripture, sola scriptura yeah. or something like that and then there were people who said all these gifts ended with the apostles we believe that the modern pentecostal movement and charismatic movements is a renewal of the gifts which include miracles and people i believe people want to believe but you know 
there are people who say they're healed and it was really wishful thinking, right. or it maybe is. they are healed, but there's no real proof to satisfy the critics that something happened beforehand. So talk to me about these miracles and then I'll share a personal experience. Well, uh, the first thing I want to do is comment on Dr. Luke. The Christian movement relied on Dr. Luke to write the book of Acts and the book of Luke, of course. But the interesting thing about his role in the church history is that's what he did. As a medical doctor, he examined the stories. He gave us a record of what God did through the church in the book of Acts. We are not in any way supposing to add to scripture. I won't do that. John warns us of that in the book of Revelation. But what we can do is extend the ministry of Christ in the modern era and verify its existence to do it with discipline and balance and integrity. And that's, that's what I feel is important because I'll tell you, there are two enemies of the miraculous. The first is the atheist skeptic on the one hand, and the other is the false minister on the other hand. And I've often told people that the false preacher is the only true atheist because he's the only individual that's acting fully as if God did not exist because they're stealing money, leading a double life, lying about the gospel. They couldn't do that and sleep at night unless they were convinced there was no God. So the miracles that we are seeing are happening on hearts, bodies, nerves, growths, people that have been hopelessly ill that have been healed by the power of God. In some instances, uh, Steve, they've been healed watching and were miles away. I'm going to tell you one story. It happened in Rockland, which is outside of Sacramento. Her name is Grace. And Grace was watching our tent crusade from an Assembly of God church in Lincoln, California. Now, I want to watch, listen to this. She didn't come to the meeting because she was in too much pain. This is her story. Her hands were in excruciating pain. Well, uh, she's watching on TV because she found out that locally, one of the churches was going to televise and use a stream from the event. So I point out at the audience, thinking that the individual I'm describing is in the audience. And I said, there is a woman with excruciating pain in her hands, and she's being healed right now. She was in a room with 50 other people, and she started screaming. And she said, it's me. And everyone in that audience was absolutely electrified at the power of God, for which we give all the glory to Christ. These signs and indications of God's power, grace is one example of that. But in the tent itself, people have been healed, have left, found out later that their symptoms had vanished, went to their doctor. Doctors found out that growths were no longer in their body. These things are happening, and the good news is they're happening now. The bad news is why they're happening now, Steve, because America is literally on the line. The survival of this nation is down to a moment where we can feel it without a miracle, without an intervention in our culture, we're going to lose our freedom. And I, I think that just as the devil knows his time is short and he's in a rage, God also knows that America's time is short and he is releasing power. And why I want to counsel any minister, any preacher that's watching us today let the Spirit of God move in your Sunday morning service. Get rid of this hermetically sealed, pre-programmed, packaged Sunday service and open the door for the Spirit of God to move. God will give you miracles, and miracles, will the news of them will go through a neighborhood like no other social media possibly can, and people will come to God. And I'd love to say it's a glorious moment. Yeah, 
We're watching the glory, but it's because the hour is so late and the nation is in desperate trouble. Well, I agree with you, of course, and I want to hear more about these miracles, but let's first of all talk about Living Proof, which is a movie being made. And uh, here's a little trailer uh, that people can expect, and then we'll be back to talk about it. This thing that's been growing inside of you is dying by the power of God. And all of a sudden, God said, that was for you. And I want you to get a tent. And you'll see miracles. And I was like, this tent, what is this? No, this is not for me. This, this is all fake. I'm not doing this. He wasn't living. He was existing. When I first met Steve, he was hunched over in a lot of pain. You know, I was like, really got him on the ads. I did. I was over my life with the pills. He just seemed like he was in pain all the time. He walked into the boot tent and he encountered a miracle that continues to blow all of our minds. In this room, diseases will start to be healed in people's body. Next thing I know, I'm shaking. I didn't even realize when I was standing straight up and down that I didn't have any pain. I looked at everybody in the row like, please, somebody tell me what's happening here. Steve was just a whole brand new human being. Careful. One characteristic of the outpouring of the Spirit, or what we call revival, is that it's not the end. It's just the beginning. God is getting his people ready. Well, that's exciting. Would you tell me a little bit about the background of this and what you're hoping to accomplish? Okay, well, first of all, the young lady, Bree, that you just saw, uh, with a condition where uh, a toxic reaction to uh, to antibiotics made her body start to consume itself. She's 5'10", went down to 94 pounds. And the devastation extended to her motor skills. And so they wheeled her in, and she demanded that she come to the front of the meeting and poured herself out onto the floor and began screaming, as you see on the video. And uh, that miracle is absolutely undeniable, and it's just the wonder of Christ. At the end of the film in the theaters, I'm going to give a 12-minute presentation to call people to be saved and to be healed. And we're hoping that by the time we get to that portion of the night, that the case is so incontrovertibly made for the reality of Jesus that the audience will be moved. And we're expecting many, many people to be saved in theaters and healed. And uh, so we're thrilled about it. And we're going to put together a grassroots movement. You know, a lot of people know our tent crusades. In fact, the, right now we're getting ready for Phoenix. That's the backdrop I've got is Phoenix, Arizona. And we're fighting a war there in order to get the crusade done. And it's, it's coming together. But we are hopeful of using the skills that God has given us to create a grassroots volunteer army. Sometimes we've had 1,500 volunteers in our tent. Well, we have the ability to put together a national army so that when this film appears in a theater, there will be a grassroots campaign that is so well organized that will overflow the theaters. Wherever the film will be shown, we're expecting to overflow the theaters and for it to take on a life of its own. And, and it's thrilling to me as a spirit-filled believer to have a proven, something with integrity and decency and quality that really does give out the spirit-filled message of the baptism in the Holy Spirit and healing and the salvation of Christ. Well, it's important that people become part of this grassroots army because um, the theaters, which play all kinds of terrible stuff, have actually recently been much more open to what they call faith-based movies. Exactly. I mean, 
Charisma Media even had one with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn that was more or less a documentary of his book, Harbinger 2. It was called Harbinger of Things to Come. And it played just less than two years ago. And it was the number two movie. It was on a Tuesday night, as I recall, in the whole country. Only Doctor Strange was bigger. And then it, it came back later. And it was like revival broke out at the end of the film. It was wow. phenomenal to see. People started praising the Lord and all this kind of stuff. And then Greg Locke from Nashville did one out in Jesus' name. A similar kind of thing happened, except there were actually, in fact, he had a statement toward the end, similar to what you just described, in which he started praying deliverance, and people were manifesting in theaters all over the country. Now, these are only two examples. There are a lot of other examples. CBN has done some things, some other ministries. We need to support them, partly because these theater owners could care less about the gospel or anything else. All they care about is ticket sales, and I'm sorry to be that crass, but that's how it is. But, you know, on the other hand, we want positive things to go to, and the price of a theater ticket is not very much. We pay it for other things. We need to um, support uh, ministries like you, and I just applaud you for doing this. Now, I want to hear about some other miracle stories that have happened. I know you were in Sacramento recently. You've had a lot of uh, miracles, and people are hungry for this. They are. People... Things are so bad in our country, it's almost as if the pendulum is swinging the, or beginning to swing the other way, but but we are in a very precarious situation. So tell us some other stories of miracles that you've seen in your tent crusades and also in places like uh, Capitol uh, Christian Center in Sacramento and other churches that you've been to. Well, uh, the miracles we've seen in the, in the tent ironically, happen often to non-Christians. That's the element. See, both Bree that you see in the film and then Stephen, the other gentleman, neither one of them knew Christ at the moment of their healing. And that's a remarkable statement. I mean, what in the world are we talking about there? Well, we have people like Joseph, who I'll tell you about his healing in Fresno. Joseph was on his way to work, driving along Highway 99, which we call the Corridor of Glory in California. And as he was driving along Highway 99, he saw the tent at 4.30 in the afternoon, and a voice told him, get in the tent. Well, he was 19 years old, and he's addicted to heroin. Mm. And he has liver, kidney, and heart disease. So, and, no, excuse me, pancreas, liver, and kidneys. And when he heard that voice, he went straight over to the tent in the parking lot at 4.30. And strangely enough, even though the meeting didn't begin for two hours, there were already people there sitting under the tent. And so he went and sat in the tent, called his boss, said, I'm not coming in today because I'm, I'm going to be in this tent. And the boss said, if you don't show up, I'm going to have to fire you. And he said, well, I guess I'm fired. Wow. So he sat there. I'm now arriving. I usually arrive about 45 minutes before start time. And, and I'm pacing outside the tent. And all of a sudden, the Lord says, there'll be a young man. When you see him, you'll know him. And I didn't have any picture, so I don't know how God was going to let me know who it was. But he ran down the entire profile that I just described. Well, I walk in. I'm standing there. I'm, in, I'm welcoming the people. I look out, and there on the aisle, about six rows back, on my right side, center aisle, is this kid, Joseph. I walk down to him. I ask him to stand. Now, you would never do this, Steve, in a church. It'd be too raw. But I looked at him and I said, are you addicted to heroin? And he says, yes, I am. And then I began to describe the other illnesses in his body, and I could watch the visible shaking of the power of God on this young man who a demonic spirit was cast out of him. His body was healed. He was saved. 
And when I thought I had finished my job, God spun me around and said, go back, you're not finished yet. And I told him, you're going to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is a, a major portion of what we believe in under the tent, because we can't have gangsters and drug addicts saved without leaving. They got to, they got to have the power of God to create that degree of separation with their past. So I put my hand on him, and all of a sudden, Steve, this beautiful language starts coming out of him. Well, I didn't miss an opportunity. I lowered the mic near his mouth, and that prayer language of the Holy Spirit filled the tent. And it was like, it just ignited everyone in the room. The praise that went up to God was amazing. That was an uh, astonishing miracle, and we thank God for it. The tempur-pedic breeze makes sleep feel cool. So no more sweating all night or blasting the air conditioning because the temper breeze feels up to 10 degrees cooler all night long. Tempur-pedic, ranked number one customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased online by J.D. Power. Amen. And, you know, you're telling that about the dark addicts and so forth needing the power of the Holy Spirit brings to mind a story I'll try to tell very briefly about David Wilkerson, who started yeah. Teen Challenge. Right. Well, back in the 60s, Teen Challenge was very small. They had one center on Clinton Avenue in Brooklyn, and they found that the drug addicts who received the baptism in the Holy Spirit stayed off of drugs, and the ones who didn't receive tended to slip back into their old ways. And one day, a Catholic priest who had heard about them, and he came by the center to kind of get a tour, he asked David Wilkerson about this. And so in his book, Cross the Switchblade, you can read it for yourself. They stop the narrative, and he tells this Catholic priest about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some Catholic students at Duquesne University right. in 1967 read that chapter and started seeking God. And that is the beginning of the modern charismatic renewal in the world. Mm -hmm. Millions of people have been swapped, swept into the kingdom of God. And it was because about the story about the fact that the drug addicts needed the power of the Holy Spirit to live a life free. And really, to some extent, all of us are bound up to something. If it's not drugs, it's something else. And we all need to have that power. That's why the Holy Spirit fell on the which was the beginning of the church. And um, we're, we're beginning to come to the end. And I want to hear other stories, but I also want to encourage people to subscribe to the Strang Report if you don't already. Hit the little bell so you know when we're on every Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. But I'm going to tell a personal story. And if Mario has been my guest several times, and I've told how I've known you since 1971, which is true, and you had a powerful, powerful ministry back then. And I said to myself on today's podcast, you know, I'm not going to tell this story one more time. People can go back on YouTube or the Charisma Podcast Network and see it. But you're talking about miracles. And Mario, I've enjoyed good health most of my life. But the most significant healing that I had in the answer to prayer was in your meeting in 1971. And the story is that I hurt my back when I was about six years old, falling off a swing set. Mm -hmm. And it damaged one vertebrae. And every once in a while, and so I was 20 years old and having excruciating pain, it would be triggered by something. It was really probably a pinched nerve, and eventually I'd get over it. But I was in excruciating pain at that conference that I was at, at sitting on wooden benches, as I recall. Yeah. And I felt, you know, it's not like having pancreatic cancer or something. I mean, everybody's got some level of back problem, I think. But I went forward. And I was instantly healed, I'm going to say, of the pain, of the pinched nerve. And today, occasionally, I have a little bit of back problem. But I believe that God really, really healed me. And I wanted to give glory to God one more glory time. To God. And, um, you know, I've told you that story. In fact, you said you remembered it. I, it's hard yeah, for me to believe you remembered it. It was so long ago. But maybe that just gives a little bit of credibility that you are not new to the scene. You've been doing this for years, and God's been <laughs> using you. And really, if God can can heal me or help me, that was a very uh, impactful time in my life. 
he can do it for anyone. And that's the message I want to communicate in my podcast is that the things that you see, the things we talk about, God can do in your own life. And um, that's right. so tell us some more stories because I, we're going to use up all the time. I want to get as many stories about the miracles and the, and the supernatural because a lot of churches don't believe the supernatural no, or they, they even play it down. Uh, yes. Sometimes they actually oppose it. Um, and then people don't know what to think or they, they know of a time when someone made it up or they, they misused the power of God in some way. You even were talking about it before with, with, uh, you said these pastors, these apostate pastors were the only atheists because they're acting this way. If they believed in God, they wouldn't act this way. So I believe that your testimony is sort of an antidote to that. Tell me more. Teresa Stacy was healed in Clear Lake, California. And she tried to get in our meeting three times, but the, the limited space made it impossible. Uh, we, she literally had only days left to live. And uh, the, the shopping list of her ailments were virtually endless. 90% of her liver was not working. She had diabetes. She had uh, uh, a condition in her spine where the, met, the bone was liquefying and she had lost two inches of height. She had peripheral neuropathy, a nerve problem that a lot of people have isolated to their feet, but with her, it was all over her body. And even bed sheets, putting a sheet on top of her would cause her pain. 14 years, she and her husband uh, slept in separate bedrooms because of her condition and the pain. She couldn't be hugged or touched because of this. And the doctors finally told her, you know, you, you don't have any time left and go put your house in order. So she comes to the meeting, can't get in because the line was too long, tries a second time. And the third time she's standing in a light rain outside of the facility and finally makes it in. I think she was there 90 minutes early. And she's sitting on the aisle and this facility we were in had a cement floor. And you got to remember her condition. And I looked down at her and God said, this is all that's going on in her. And I give him the glory. I'm terrified when I share stories like this because I don't want anyone to think I've got any power at all because I don't. And I went down there and to make it real quick, I asked her to stand. And when she began to stand, Steve, I thought I'd done the most cruel thing I'd ever done in my life. Because when she struggled to get on her feet, it was so excruciating. And then I uh, reached out to pray for her and she fell on that cement floor with no one to catch her. And, and the husband was standing next to her. Jim is his name. Jim looked at his wife bounce off cement floor and utterly panicked because he knew this, is, this would kill her. Well, she heard my voice talking to Jim like she was listening from the end of a barrel you know, just a long tunnel, excuse me. And uh, so she is hearing this and being operated on by God. She was five foot seven when she hit the floor and she was five foot nine when she stood up. Then all the tests done on her liver, done on her pancreas, her lungs, her heart, she was totally healed by the power of God. And, and I'm telling you, it shook people and it shook me, even after years of seeing the miraculous, that shook me to my core. Well, we just have a couple of minutes left, and I want to give you the last word. Tell people how they connect with Mario Murillo Ministries, how they can find out about the meeting you're going to have in Phoenix, about uh, living proof, you know, as things develop and, and is put on a schedule, because it's not going to happen until fall of 2024. And... Um, and then end with just a positive encouragement to people to believe God. All in two minutes. <laughs> yes, you can do it. <laughs> Go to mariomarillo.org. That brings you to everything. That'll tell you about the film, Our Next Ten Crusade, right here in Phoenix on April 21st through the 24th. You'll find out about the film. You'll find out how you can volunteer. You'll find out how you can be active. And I'm going to say this because I really believe 
that if you were to ask me the number one thing the devil is doing to people right now is he's trying to get them introverted, thinking about their problem, thinking about how life affects them. And the instantaneous power against that is to become involved in the needs of other people. Mm -hmm. And the minute you do, not only are they going to be touched, but it's going to back up on you and it's going to transform your life. There is nothing that erases depression as fast as fresh vision. And a fresh vision to be used of God is the single greatest cure for all this onslaught of bad news. Every bit of this evil that's going on right now, my friend, you can solve it just by saying, God, make me a source of healing, encouragement, and power for other people. And the minute you do that, you're going to see an instant relief and the weight of life is going to come off of you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Marty Merlo, thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking time. Thank you for being my friend. Wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? I just so enjoy this video today. And I hope it encourages you all too to get involved and do things and possibly go to a, a tent revival, uh, get involved with a spirit-filled church. If you're not saved, give your life to Jesus and your life will change so dramatically. You will wish you had did it sooner. God bless and we'll be back next time.